It's not easy for us busy geotechnical engineers to keep up with industry trends while keeping up for engineering work. Therefore, it's our goal at the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast to help you do just that. We strive to keep our listeners informed of important industry topics and also to educate you on interesting technical topics and trends in the geotechnical world. In this episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast, I'll be talking with Ryan Coggins, PE, Senior Geotechnical Engineer at Kiwit Infrastructure Engineers. We'll be talking about his career journey, and more specifically, we'll be talking about the differences between being a consultant and being a contractor as it relates to geotechnical engineering. I'm your host, Jared Green, and I'm excited to be bringing you another episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. Before we go on here, I'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, Tensar International. Here's a message from Tensar about their award-winning software, Tensar Plus, which is available to you at no cost. Check out Tensar Plus. The award-winning design software for construction professionals to design with geosynthetics and calculate their value on projects. Tensar Plus is simple to use with a powerful engineering system at its core. It leverages our decades of research and experience with soils all over the world, so you can count on your solutions working the first time, even in the most difficult conditions. Whether you're designing a crane pad or need to build a temporary road over muck, the cost, time, and carbon savings can be calculated, making comparison with alternatives simple. Specs, reports, and product data can be generated for your design, and Training resources, research, and our third-party expert reviews are all provided conveniently in the software if needed. Usable both online and offline, the app is available in browser and on all major mobile platforms. Whatever you're working on, Tensar Plus is your toolbox for success. Welcome to the show, Ryan. How are you doing? Doing good. How about yourself, Jared? I'm doing great. Doing great. I've been looking forward to this conversation. I'm really glad we're able to nail down a time and place that, that worked for both of us, right? A lot of running around these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's busy out there. So I've been, been traveling quite a bit and glad to be on the show. Excellent, excellent. Well, it'd be great if you could tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself, uh, talk about your career journey and, uh, you know, what you've been doing to keep busy these days. Yeah, currently, uh, currently I'm a senior geotechnical engineer at Kiwit, uh, a spearhead, a, a fairly unique, uh, set of professionals that uh, we, we get to get involved in both design and construction uh, across the company. So, uh, you know, it, it's definitely an interesting uh, week to week experience here. But, uh, you know, starting out, uh, I started in construction back during college, working my way through, uh, really kind of found my passion in construction. And uh, so after graduating from Mississippi State University in 2003, I went on to, to be a field engineer uh, on the construction side of things over in Atlanta and uh, did that for a few years, got, got tired of working in the, the hot summers and the cold winters <laughs> and uh, ha- had advice from, from a geotech I knew that said, you know, what, why don't you go for your PE, get in to consulting and if you decide to go back to construction you can always go back but it's a little bit more difficult to go the other direction as you as you get older and you you have families and, and those kinds of things so i did that took the leap into geotech and uh, became a consultant in 2003 and did that for a little more than a dozen years uh, doing a little bit of everything from small retail parcels to million square foot warehouses, million cubic yard grading jobs, to power plants, and even got into nuclear design uh, there for a while. Um, and you know, it, it transitioned a few locations, few companies uh, ended up moving from Georgia to Texas, and then eventually uh, progressed all the way to managing South Louisiana for a consulting firm on the geotech side. And uh, around 2015, uh, I took the, took a leap back into the contractor side of things with the deep foundation uh, specialty contractor 
spent several years doing that. And uh, then here I am at Kiwit, getting to do a little bit of everything. That's really awesome. You know, a lot of people have a career fully in consulting. Others have a career fully in specialty contractor. Sounds like you've been, you know, moving around a little bit. I, I think it's really helped me having that experience, the broad experience from being a field inspector, a special inspector uh, side of things, doing materials testing, understanding the laboratory testing involved, being out with drill rigs, doing geotechnical borings, and then turning that into the construction side. So it's it's really just what everything I've done in the past is just building on what I'm going to be doing today and tomorrow and and hopefully next week. No, oh, that's great, and and I have to imagine that that gives you a perspective of what one another is looking for. So as the design consultant, right, you you, you know have an idea what the bidders are going to be looking for and and paying attention to it and vice versa. It it really helps, particularly when we're looking at geotechnical reports from the consultant uh you know either the the owners provided it or the consultant may actually work for us having that that intimate um understanding of what they're doing and how they got there really helps us take a look at it sort through the data and then apply that going forward and in, into the, the the construction and hopefully finding the efficiencies there yeah no, that makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense and i think that yeah, I guess as a geotechnical engineer, we learned so much. We we know a lot academically and theoretically, but the practical experience comes back to the projects we work on. And, and, and when yeah. you think back on the projects, you think about a specific project that was instrumental to your career or your development as an engineer. And this could be on the consulting side or, or on the contracting side. I'd be curious to to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, that's a tough one. I'd say. I don't know. That's tough to narrow down. The, the, <laughs> even the, the smaller projects that I was involved in, you know, these may be very, very small uh, geotechnical explorations, but a lot of times those very small parcels can be the more difficult ones to work yeah. on because because they're not being built on prime land. Typically, you're dealing with uh, you know settlement issues, and you've got time constraints and budget constraints, and so you have to be pretty nimble to operate on those. And then as you get into the larger projects, it's really just a combination of of all the the other things and these smaller tasks that you've done rolled into one big package and you just uh, you attack the the bigger problem piece by piece. And so it in in a sense it it, it makes you more pr proficient as a professional having been down those roads and understanding the the smaller pieces that feed into you know these bigger projects that we're doing now got it got it you know i think about geotechnical engineering you know i talked to a lot of people on on this podcast and you know throughout the industry uh, you know i think one of the things that's so cool about geotech you think about all of civil engineering is the flexibility that's there you know as far as the types of things you could do with that degree and that background and yeah you know, look at your background very impressive background i worked on a lot of different types of geotechnical aspects uh, you've also done business development, I understand, and also marketing. What were you say the differences between, you know, working as a consultant and then working as a contractor? And when you look at the experiences, you know, I have to imagine that they're intertwined. But what are some of the, what are some of the differences you've seen and experienced? The, there's definitely different philosophies with with each one. So the the mm -hmm. consultant, it may not even uh, may not even know what loads they're trying to design to but they're trying to get information about the site mm -hmm. provide recommendations that meet the needs of the project and then attempting to forecast what the contractor is going to do once they get out there to build it mm -hmm. so it, it's difficult from a geotechnical consultant standpoint that you almost have to try to foresee the future there yeah a bit uh, and, and you may not even get to be involved in the construction side of things to, to know what was actually built. So <laughs> you know, that piece alone is very difficult. And then on the contractor side, you're trying to take these reports that, uh, you know, are, are really 
not blanket statements, but you know, they're trying to cover all the bases and you're trying to whittle it down to now we have a very defined scope of what we're trying to build, what information is pertinent, what information could we could could we even go get better information to help us streamline these these bids and then apply that to the design side, get out there and build it. And then, you know, so on the the geotech contractor side of things we not only get to play geotech consultant a bit but we also get to get our get our hands dirty and get out there in the field to see see these things from start to finish oh, that's great and and you know there's a number of people like i can remember when i was in school i was like well you know i want to be a civil engineer then it was like i want to be a geotech or structural, then it was like, oh, I want to be a consultant. So you have to, all these either ors, right? But if somebody's trying to figure out if they should start, I'll say start because you've shown you can go from one to the other to the other. But, um, you know, how does somebody know if they should start in consulting or if they should start in contracting? Again, there's a, a litany of other things, but out of those two, how does somebody decide which way to go? Uh, honestly, when it, whenever I was going through college, I, I didn't fully understand what I wanted to do. I thought about, well, I, I really kind of liked surveying. I liked <laughs> geotech. I liked, uh, I was very heavy in structures. But I liked the structural engineering side of things, but I, I really liked the, the, the construction side, uh, getting out there, self-performing, pouring concrete, tying rebar, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And the, for me, the, the deciding factor coming out of school was just salary. Hmm, uh, okay. <laughs> a, a lot of, a lot of the money's on the construction side and so i was I, I already had a position as a field engineer so i you know hey why why not go uh, go for the better salary and and go do what i like and then um you know somewhere along the line i jumped into geotech um you know took honestly took a little bit of a pay cut but had a lot better hours Mm. and uh you know started from there and so just progressing through becoming a pe and then then going through my career uh you know i i get to see both sides of it that you know yeah i wasn't really short-sighted going into construction it, it was definitely gave me more tools in my toolbox as a geotech that helped propel me as a geotech so i you know, to me, there's no downside. So going one way or the other, and, uh, you know, even on the geotechnical consulting side of things, the stuff you learn there, you can't learn anywhere else unless you've been behind that drill rig, seeing the samples coming out, understanding what they're doing. And so now on the, where I'm at now, the geotech on the design and construction side, I look at these reports and, and I fully understand what they're saying and that helps me do my job better. So that, you know, that, that helps to feed me, helps, helps me to be more technically proficient. And, you know, even on that, whenever I go reading white papers and technical manuals, I can see the bigger picture because I've, I've had those experiences and coming, coming out of college, I, I honestly, I didn't see the full picture. I, I I knew a lot less than what I thought I did, uh, you know, even academically until I got got into the consulting uh, consulting realm and started going through, uh, you know, all the calculations, uh, understanding the philosophy, understanding where even some of these things came from. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in the day, and and I mean, a lot of the things that we do today. We're, we're effectively beating a glorified pipe in the ground and extrapolating just massive amounts of data out of it. Yeah. And I don't think you can fully understand that unless you've been behind the drill rig and, and, and touch the, touch the samples yourself. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm thinking about my first few years of, of, of work and, I had a master's degree, but a lot of, it was my first time seeing these things, you know, you design brace excavations, you're in the field and you're like, ah, that's a tie back, you know, it's just kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and I mean, some of us, <laughs> some of us go through a long career and as a consultant, you do tend to get, uh, live in a little bit of a, a bubble, either regionally or geologically, you, you tend to 
stay, you know, within say a couple of hundred miles of, of where you operate. Mm -hmm. And so the, the one, uh, one thing that I've, I've seen in the industry is that, and uh, I was the same way is that you operate fine in that bubble. And then once you move to another area, you've got to get out of your comfort zone and really, really understand the technical side to be able to move, into different applications, understanding different geologies, different construction techniques. And, you know, so to me, that's a, that's a really important aspect of, of being a geotech consultant is, you know, try to get outside of that bubble to, to advance your career and it'll make you a better geotech, uh, you know, wherever you're at. That's so true. That's so true. If you work in, you know, just one region, <laughs> one, one town or something like that, you, you, you know, what's going to happen before you even do anything. But once you start going yeah. to some of these places where the uh, geology map is a convergence of a lot of different colors, right? It's like, Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's definitely, it, it's intimidating. It was intimidating for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's still intimidating. Um, but you know, maybe that's my safety, safety mechanism telling me I need to <laughs> need to go learn more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, I, I rely on the folks around me that, that are a lot smarter than me to, to, to help me with differences regionally, different, uh, you know, if you put in an auger cast pile in one place, that may not be the same thing in another place. Mm -hmm. You get into tiebacks, you know, if you're, uh, you know, you're, if you're, if you're up in the Northeast, that's completely different if you're out West, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, understanding that, one, I, I definitely do not know everything, and um, I, I need I need to continue gaining that experience just to be more proficient down the road. That's so true. It keeps it keeps us humble, if anything, right? <laughs> so realize it, it you have to keep, keep learning. <laughs> oh man! Yep. Well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the uh, you know the academic experience, and one could say versus the field experience, but you know the academic experience and then the field experience. Like, how does one uh, reinforce the other? How does one prepare you for the other? You know, you might have somebody that's doing an internship before finishing their academic studies, or you may have somebody that gets their advanced degrees and then goes onto the field. But um, talk about that a little bit, you know, what it means for the geotech, you know, having this balance of the academic experience and then the practical field experience. Yeah, for, for me, it was really, it was really, I was just trying to get out of get out of college and make a paycheck. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I had thought about an advanced degree and, uh, you know, I made my decision that, well, hey, I need to go get a paycheck, um, which, you know, has worked out fine. But it's, for me personally, uh, I strive to learn a lot of these academic things, either attending conferences, attending seminars, uh, reading manuals in my downtime, uh, you know, as fun as that sounds, um, but having that field experience, especially in college, I think really sets the younger engineer up to figure out, you know, one, what, what do they really want to do? What do, do they have a passion for it yet? And whenever I jumped into GeoDeck, I, I didn't have a passion for it yet, but that developed over a couple of years. And it was as I became more technically competent that I really, really enjoy waking up every day now to go into work, deal with complex geotechnical issues, you know, dealing with contractor issues. So the, the field experience to me is hands down, I, I feel like that, that every PE should have field experience under their belt, uh, either on the consulting side or on the contractor side to to reinforce what they've been learning in the textbooks. And then, you know, hats off to the folks that, that, that have gone through and gotten those advanced degrees. That's setting them up with better tools in their tool belt to, to go out into the real world. But uh, I, I don't think you can replace practical field experience with, with anything in a textbook or, you know, or, or anything on paper. I think hands-on is, is, is absolutely necessary to, to be a, a good geotech. Yeah, I, I definitely would agree with that, Ryan. And um, I don't know when, when you uh, think about the future of the geotechnical industry. In your opinion, what what do you what do you think's on the horizon, or what what what's in the future for us? 
Right now, I, I think Geotech is, is is pretty exciting. It's a great place to be right now. I I think for for a while there, it was maybe maybe not appreciated as much as it should. But it seems like um, in, in the past few years, the value of Geotech has really come to life. And then, of course, you know, podcasts like this is really helping to to show the the younger engineers out there what's available to them. Um, mm. Whenever I graduated, we didn't have podcasts. That's, <laughs> I think we bar- we barely had internet at that point. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's exciting. There's there's lots of work out there. Um, some of it's not the funnest work, but uh, you know, if you go out with a positive attitude and you learn something to every project or even just every day at the office, that that is what gets me excited, learning something new. Um, you know, as far as the future, I think that that's, uh, I think that's, that's where the, the, the earlier career engineers really gonna, really gonna change the industry because now we've got technology that is helping us older fellas figure things out better either we figure out that well maybe we were too conservative or Mm. or hey we were spot on but combining those two is is where i think things really get exciting with better instrumentation better better modeling uh and and just now we can share all the information that we've got where it's used to it was pretty difficult to even find a find a white paper or a technical manual um you know, things have just evolved over the past couple of decades that, that has really gotten the information out there and that just builds upon itself for the future. Yeah, I, I think that, that is, uh, that's, that's done a lot for the industry. When you think about the knowledge sharing, think about all the conferences that we attend and the way you're able to get, you know, case histories out. And, and you're right, it's a lot easier to get access to this information. So that's it's helpful for everybody. It's helpful for everybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've uh, I've been a proponent. Um, I guess I'm going on close to 20 years now. Whenever I cr- come across a white paper or a technical manual, uh, I try to, you know, grab a copy. There's so much information out there on the public realm mm-hmm. that if you sit down and and you go through it, you can you can pick up on a lot of things just going through that. And I, I you know, I I keep basically a technical folder for all sorts of things, some things I thought I would never touch again, but you know, <laughs> lo and behold, here I am. Uh, yeah. So it, it not only helps get the information to you, but you get to see the evolution of how some of these things that we do has changed over the years. So mm-hmm. I, and to me, that's a huge benefit of understanding the, the methodology and the origins of, of some of the calculations we do, or even just the philosophy of, of what we do. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And then, uh, you know, if you're ever doing anything, you know, not necessarily forensic, but anything that's tied back to working alongside a historic st- structure or something like that, understanding what was done for a building of that vintage, it's like super important. I find myself going back to old building codes to see, you know, what were the governing factors back then? And it gives you a clue of what, what could be there. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, almost like we're even, we're almost it, like detectives here, right? As geotechs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, even modern day building codes. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the early origins of IBC, there's been a lot of changes over the years, and you know, th- there's going to be more changes coming. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm part of a committee with ASC that's helping to to write the next standard for all things geotech and foundations, mm-hmm. shallow and deep foundations, ground improvement. Um, so, you know, being part of that committee has not only been exciting to see changes coming, but, uh, you know, I've been able to contribute to that. So, you know, to me, that's, that's one of the, the bigger, if you want to call it accomplishments, is uh, for me, is just being part of that committee, being around these, some of these guys, you know, they write the manuals and they've written the manuals for, for quite a while. So just being exposed to that, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty humbling to, to, to be part of that group. So, um, you know, it, it, it all feeds on itself. Yeah. That's really awesome. Well, thank you for your contributions there. Looking forward to 
uh, learning more about that in the near future. Awesome. And then now uh, before we take our break, final piece of advice you'd like to give some of the younger listeners out there. I'd, I'd say for the early career professionals, really just put yourself out there, um, you know, get out there and network with the folks you see, whether it's on LinkedIn at conferences, if, if you're on projects, get to know the folks that are, that are on the team for the project. So you, you can learn so much from, from the folks that have been around, um, you know, it not only helps, helps, you on the project having that personal connection, but but you really learn a lot of life experiences and professional experiences from those people that have been out there for a while. I mean, you you, you can't replace decades of experience, uh, but if you can get exposed to some of that, you you can certainly, you know, that those are the things that stick in the back of my mind as I you know day to day is the conversations I had early on that I think you know man that that advice that engineer gave me was, was spot on. And here I am, you know, 10 or 20 years later using that same advice. And I'm trying to pass that on to the to younger engineers as well. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I can remember uh, <laughs> the days of meeting people at, at conferences and I'm like, wait a minute, I just reviewed your shop drawing. You know, it's kind of like putting <laughs> the name to the face. It's kind of like, wow, these you, are people you, on the other side. <laughs> You you will always cross paths with with the person you're meeting today. You're going to run across them in the future. You might be working for them. They might yep. be working for you. It <laughs> it it is it, it's almost scary uh, how often that happens. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's a very small world and an even smaller industry when you think about it. <laughs> exactly. All right, great. Well, that's a good moment for us to to kind of pause. We're going to come back in just a minute. And close this one out with Ryan on our Career Factor Safety In segment. Stick around. This video is also brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. It's time for our Career Factor Save Me In segment. So in geotechnical engineering, just like many disciplines of engineering, it's important to incorporate a factor of safety into your design. But what about incorporating a factor of safety into your career? Today, of course, we're speaking with Ryan Coggins, PE, Senior Geotechnical Engineer at Kiewit Infrastructure Engineers. Ryan, you've already had a very successful career, but when you look back at your career, what's one thing you implemented in your career to give yourself a factor of safety in your career? Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. The first week here at Kiewit, I was uh, getting introduced to, to, to one of the managers. He, he said something that, that was spot on, and it's a, a key phrase over here. It was plan the plan, and it was mm. so simple that I, once I thought about it, I said, you know, that's really – encompasses everything from your professional career to your your personal life to just life in general and so the thing that that I try to tell younger professionals is plan the plan you know uh, where do you want to be in a few years how, figure out how you're going to get there you know what what adversities are you going to go through from point a to point b how are you going to deal with it and what are you going to learn from it so that you can carry that forward into the, you know, into the future. And, and so that key phrase there, I, I think really says it all. And, and that's what I've tried to do in my career was look ahead to, uh, to, to what's coming down the road. Where's where, what project am I going to be working on next? What, what do I need to know before I get there? And how do I navigate the business side of, of geotech, how to navigate the technical side of geotech and plan the plan really encompasses all of that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on and for sharing such great insights with us. Uh, you shared some great information and advice. I know it's going to be helpful for our listeners. If somebody's listening or watching and wanted to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to find you? You have an uh, email address you want to share or you're on social media? 
I would say LinkedIn is probably the easiest way. I've been very active on LinkedIn for 10 or 15 years at least. And uh, your listeners are more, more than welcome to reach out to me there. And, I'll be, and uh, I'll be glad to respond to them and help them however I can, uh, you know, whether it's uh, professional advice or, or, you know, putting them in contact with, with someone I know that might be able to help them. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on. This is great. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. Please feel free to go to geotechnicalengineeringpodcast.com where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, that being episode 56, as well as any links to resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, we wish you the very best in all your geotechnical engineering endeavors. Peace.